All right, bros. So in this video, I thought this would be an interesting topic to make. Um, overlooked death metal bands growing up as a kid, because there were plenty of them. That uh, plenty of CDs I walked by in a record store, and I totally regret it. But look, luckily, later on in life, I was able to check it out because we have YouTube and we have other ways to find music. So I'm really, really glad that I was able to catch up on these particular bands, and I want to go through them with you guys. I'm sure you guys might have a list or two of. Uh, bands that you kind of kicking yourself in the ass for never checking out when you were a kid but let's get started here because i got five of them i could probably do like two or three more videos on this seriously there's a lot of bands that unfortunately i didn't check out when i was younger for whatever reason but um so we're gonna start with number five and it is flesh crawl it's a band from germany they're like a doom death metal band that formed in 87 and the name of this album was descend into the absurd i saw this cd this is going to be kind of like uh, the same story over and over because this is how it happened every time when I go to the record store because back then if you guys are my age you're in your 30s like all we had to go off of is like we'd flip through the jewel case and through the booklet go to the special thanks and then you'd see the band names and like oh this band name looks pretty cool and then if you found it in a record store you kind of just based on what the cover looks like if the logo looks cool pick it up and hope that it's what you wanted so that's kind of what we had to do back then that or if you had uh if you were able to find the metal maniacs magazine or something like that you could uh find artist names that way too but flesh crawl was one that man i walked by that cd a million times it had a cool logo and everything too it was like a dripping blood kind of logo and you know it had some pretty good song titles but for whatever reason i just i was like hesitant i never took a chance on it and i'm kicking myself for it man because it was they're a really good band check them out it's like they got uh if i were to if i were to compare them to somebody or say who they sound like it would be like a tuned down lower variation of obituary with like you know early david vincent vocals like blessed are the sick covenant period like something like that um but there's still i mean it's got your slower to mid pace kind of uh tempo and then you got some blast beat sections in there too but for the most part it's it's more doom, like slower pace, but it's really good stuff. Check it out if you haven't heard it. I'll put a link in the description for you guys so you can check it out. Number four, Divine Empire. This is, um, I think when I, when I seen this particular album, it was Redemption. When I saw this album in the record store, it said right there, members of Malevolent Creation. I already kind of, kind of knew that, or I suspected that, like who was going to be in the band because, uh, you know, when, um, Malevolent's next album after in cold blood came out it didn't have these three particular members in the band anymore so um yeah i i just for whatever reason i didn't check that one out i think it was maybe at that time i was going through uh like my i was listening to kind of like the new metal kind of shit because i did go through a period of time in my life back then where i was listening to that for a few years i was still listening to like what i already had like my morbid angels my incantation leveling creation sinister i was listening to all that stuff still but i wasn't really buying up anything new yet until a couple couple years later when i got full blown back into death metal again but um yeah so that was a that was a particular cd that i just let hang on the shelf forever and never picked it up until uh you know the first time i heard divine empire was when i saw them with skinless uh it was dying fetus misery index uh mutilated the band that we used to share the room with uh when i was in gut rot i think there was one more band on the bill and i just can't quite remember who it was but that was back in like 2003 so that was the first time i heard divine empire and then i went back and i bought that cd and i bought doom to inherit which was the uh I think that was the sophomore album so um, they're not around anymore unfortunately but you know uh, the life that that band did have it was really really good stuff so check them out if you haven't checked them out either and then number three death thrash uh demolition hammer it's a band that formed in like 86 or something like that um uh, for whatever reason i didn't pick that one up either i don't know what it was and i i remember seeing uh I can't remember what magazine or where I saw it, but I remember, I think Rob Barrett had a Dem Demolition Hammer shirt, and I don't know why I just didn't pick the album up. It had a cool cool cover art and stuff like that. I just, I didn't, uh, maybe it was maybe it was the name that I didn't like, because I was really picky back then when I was uh, shopping around for death metal. Like, like a logo had to look a certain way, the song titles had to be a certain way, the 
cover art had to be like gory or it had to be this or that and I didn't see that if I didn't see that on these on these particular artists uh, CDs I didn't I didn't take the chance I was always thinking cannibal corpse suffocation kind of logo slash uh, cover art and things like that so uh, that was that was a mistake another mistake that I made because demolition hammers fucking badass go check them out uh, number two uh, man I got a, I got some serious catching up to do on this band bolt thrower I looked at that logo I've seen that a million times at the store too and it just didn't look like it was it looked like maybe it was a heavy metal band at best like it wasn't because it wasn't unreadable and all this kind of shit but man bolt thrower is freaking fantastic and like they've been around for ever I don't think they're together anymore but I gotta go back I got a lot of uh, a lot of CDs to check out by them so yeah that's a band that unfortunately um, I just didn't give a chance and then this one right here this is like embarrassing this you want to talk about judging a book by its cover in the wrong way Niall I can't even believe I just said that but yeah for years and years and years I did not listen to Niall um, when that album uh, amongst the catacombs of Nephron Ka came out that was at my local record store all the time nobody ever bought it it was always there when I, I'd be going through all the CDs A through Z going through the compilations going through the used CDs and I always saw that CD and then I would just I just go right past it and I remember reading in Resound magazine if you guys remember that it was like a I think it was a catalog from uh, Relapse Records where you could buy CDs you could buy t-shirts um, yeah that was Relapse, Relapse Records magazine that they uh, would send to you like if you were on the mailing list or whatever and they talked about because that was uh, you know that was one of their artists and they said it was like Egyptian influenced death metal and I don't know why it just didn't it didn't click with me like man I don't think that's gonna be very good that was my stupid train of thought but everything that I love when I listen to a death metal album is Nile you know you got the detune because I love a tuning they got that covered uh, fast drums, fast blast beats, double bass, pissed off as hell vocals, uh, just everything. And I didn't go for it. Like, I, I think it was when I was looking at those song titles, looking at that logo, and I was just like, man, this, how heavy could this be? Well, <laughs> I ate my words, because um, when I discovered them later, I think I discovered them, like, right before um, In Their Darkened Shrines, when that album came out in, like, 2002. So it was, like, right before that. I ended up picking up Black Seeds of Vengeance, and man, that was uh, that was a killer CD. I got into that pretty heavy, and then uh, in their Dark and Shrines, picked that up, and I just started picking up everything Nile had ever since. But um, yeah, I kicked myself in the ass every day for not getting into Nile sooner. But it wasn't too late. You know, I was able to check them out later, and here we are. And there's probably some honorable mentions that I could throw on this video too, but I think I'll save that for maybe a part two. Because there's, uh, I could probably muster up another five, maybe even ten uh, bands that that I never checked out, um, and it's usually based on yeah a logo or what whatever. But um, now let me know what you guys like, what your lists are like. If you had any CDs or any bands that you didn't check out in the day, back in the day, uh, that you regret not checking out, like if you had the chance and you just didn't do it. So uh, yeah, basically your your artists that you're late to the party on, I'd, I'd like to know. Leave it in the comment section. And if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you guys. Peace.